everybody, welcome to another episode of Off the Shelf. Today we are talking about our June theme for the 2021 EAPL Reading Challenge, which is Tales and Tales. So we're going to be talking about animal themed books here today. And you know, sometimes I try to give you something that's a little bit less expected, uh, maybe something you are unfamiliar with, but today it's, it's going to be pretty expected I think none of these are gonna be like whoa I've never heard of this book but that's okay just because you've heard of a book just because you know about a book doesn't mean you've necessarily read it so we're gonna do some obvious animal related choices today we're starting off with Call of the Wild by Jack London so um, Jack London spent time in the um, late 19th early 20th century in the Alaskan Klondike um, and the gold rush and everything that was going on there. So this book was originally published in 1903. It talks about his experiences with that and it focuses on a dog that's been taken from his home and his family and um, has to learn to survive in the Alaskan wilderness. So it's a nice short one. Uh, and it's a classic. If you haven't read Call of the Wild, you absolutely should. Next is, this is Wish You Were Here by Rita Mae Brown. This is the first in an entire series that focus on um, the cat, which is Mrs. Murphy. So these books, it all says that they're written by Rita Mae Brown and Sneaky Pie Brown, which is Rita Mae Brown's um, cat. I guess the cat helps write these books. But the these are cozy mysteries. Um, the fun thing about this is that the animals talk. Not to the people. It's not like a Disney movie where the animals are talking to the people. But the animals talk to each other. The animals help solve the crimes. Uh, so they, like you're getting the animal perspective and the people perspective. In this one, it's set in a small town. The um, main human character works at the post office and realizes that a couple of people who have recently been murdered um, both received postcards with tombstones on the front and the back said, wish you were here. So she's put this together and then the cat and her dog, um, the two of them help to solve the crime. I haven't read the entire book. I've read about half of this book. I tried listening to it several years ago and the talking animals was not my jam. Um, I'm wondering if I would have a different experience reading it in print though, because sometimes they have a different feel when you listen to a book versus when you actually read it with your eyes, right? So I may try this one again, but if you like Cozy Mysteries, I definitely recommend giving it a shot. Um, I have a little bit of trouble with the cozy mystery sometimes because I wonder why these people don't leave these small towns where everyone keeps getting murdered. There's only so many people there and then people keep getting murdered. Like, why don't you move? I don't get it. But it's a fun cozy mystery series. This is the first one. Check it out. Then we have Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. And I'm betting that you're all super familiar with the story of Jurassic Park, but basically scientists figure out how to clone dinosaur DNA to bring dinosaurs back to life. And they do so in this amusement park sort of situation where people can come and see living dinosaurs. That sounds amazing, but there's definitely going to be problems with that. And if you've seen the movie, you know what some of those problems are. You could probably even guess what some of those problems are. I have not read the book. I've heard some people say that it is um, somewhat different than the movie. So if you have read it, definitely let me know. But this is one that I want to read and I'm planning to do so sometime this year. So Jurassic Park, check it out. we have Life of Pi by Jan Martel and I don't know why this one is so big like this is a weird format for this book it seems like it should have illustrations or something because it's so fat but it doesn't it just has really wide margins 
I don't understand. Anyway, um, so again, you're probably familiar with the story of Life of Pi because it was a huge movie several years back, but in case you're not, um, it centers on a boy who is in a shipwreck and he survives 200 and some odd days at sea in a raft with a tiger. And so this is that story. And the tiger's name is Richard Parker, which is fun. Um, but then I seem to recall that there was some question about whether the tiger actually was real at the end. I don't know, maybe it was all in his head. Or maybe I'm making that up. That's entirely possible too. I can't remember because <laughs> it's been a while since I saw the movie and I have not read the book yet. But definitely, definitely, if you liked the movie, check out the book. Um, and if you didn't see the movie, still check out the book. Another one that was turned into a movie. We've got a bunch of them that were turned into movies today. This is Cujo by Stephen King. And I have never seen the movie or read this book. I haven't read like any of the books we're talking about today. Sorry guys. Um, but this one is based on a dog, which is super obvious from this cover here. But um, it's just St. Bernard in a small main town that is this guy's best friend. And then he follows um, some rabbit down his, you know, his bolt hole. And there's some unwell bats or something down there and he goes from being this sweet saint bernard to a like possessed killer beast so um if you're looking for some horror definitely definitely read cujo um don't read it if you're already kind of afraid of dogs though i'm going to put that out there if you're already afraid of dogs this one's not going to do you any favors so don't do that but if if you're cool with dogs you should check out cujo Another one that was turned into a movie. This is Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen. And it um, is a beautiful book. I, it's beautifully written. It is about a young man whose um, family dies. He's left orphaned and he's almost finished veterinary school. He's almost done. But he decides instead of go, finishing school, he's gonna hop on a train. And it's the Great Depression. He ends up on this train with a traveling circus and it's not you know one of the big name circuses it's kind of a down and out circus and so this book talks about his time with the circus and um, working with an elephant that everyone has decided cannot be trained and it's it's a beautiful book the movie I think was very very good too it had Reese Witherspoon and um, Robert Pattinson in it so I definitely recommend this one. I actually read this one. Um, Water for Elephants, check it out. The Art of Racing in the Rain was a movie a couple of years ago with Milo, I can never say his last name. There's so many letters in it. Ventimiglia, it's something like that. I don't remember exactly. Um, but this is one of those ones sort of like the the one with the cat um this is one of the ones where it's from the perspective of the animal it's from the perspective of the dog enzo um and he's kind of a philosopher and so as he's nearing the end of his life he's thinking back on his life and everything that he's learned from his owner and um the other people that he's come in contact with and so I'm sad dog books are not my jam guys like I you know Marley and me no no I'm not reading that book I'm not watching that movie I know perfectly well that the dog dies spoiler alert if you somehow didn't know that but I don't need to read about that so the fact that they tell you in the description of this book that he's nearing the end of his life and so he's recalling all of these things makes me think mmm no this is gonna be sad and I don't, I don't like sad animal books, but it was a very well received book. People were very excited when it was made into a movie. So I definitely recommend it if you're okay with the sad animal books. If you are, 
please read this book. It, it's, by all accounts, it's very, very good. I'm not going to read it, just say it. And we have a classic for you here, Animal Farm by George Orwell. Um, in case you are unfamiliar, it is a satirical take on um, communism. <laughs> And the animals on this farm overthrow the farmer and try to establish a um, egalitarian society, which sounds great in theory. They've got lots of great propaganda and, and all of that, but George L. Orwell's gonna tell you why that's not gonna work out. Um, obviously he was anti-communism when he wrote this, so you gotta take his perspective with that um it's definitely a bias there i'll say it like that but it's if you didn't have to read it in high school which i know a lot of people did i didn't i had to read 1984 by george orwell in high school but not animal farm but if you didn't have to read it i definitely recommend that you do it's really quick and and i think it's it's one of those important ones that um i think it's good to be familiar with you know, I'm not saying like you need to read all the classics, but I think it's good to be familiar with them and understand kind of where they're coming from. And we have a couple of nonfiction here. This is H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald. And this is a memoir um, about the time after the author's father died suddenly and she was kind of at a loss. Um, she had been a bird trainer and decided that she was going to go and get and train a goshawk. And she had avoided goshawks up to this point. So in a, in a way to kind of heal and um, not overcome, because that's you don't overcome someone's death when you lose someone, but... To heal from his death and to move forward, she decided she was going to train a goshawk, and she follows the um, guidance of T.H. White, who is the author of The Once and Future King, um, about Arthur. <laughs> so I, I, is he, does he know about birds? I don't know. I'm hoping he does if she's following his guidance, his written guidance, because he, I'm sure, is not alive at this point. Um, but it's, it was, this was a very, very well-reviewed book when it came out a few years ago. And the entire premise of it, I think, is very interesting. I know memoirs are really intriguing for a lot of us, being able to kind of glimpse into someone else's real life is, is very intriguing. And then if you're interested in birds at all, um, that's just another layer here on that. But I think even if you're not interested in birds, this would be an interesting read for you. And the last one for you today is Sea Biscuit by Lauren Hillenbrand. And this one, also a movie. Um, it's about a racehorse who no one thought could race. Um, his legs were crooked and his jockey was like crippled and partially blind and and all of these reasons why he was never going to be a, a champion racehorse and um he was and dur during 1938 1938 he was the biggest newsmaker in the world and you got to think 1938 we're getting ready to head into world war ii in europe so you've got the rise of hitler and mussolini and then in the u.s you've got the f you've got fdr kind of um with the whole new deal thing we're on the tail end of all of that happening and this horse is making bigger news than all of that all over the world so this is definitely a, a good story definitely a good read and if you're interested in horse racing and you haven't read this book, like, what are you waiting for? Read this book. So those are our animal-themed books for this month. Um, as I said, the theme is Tales and Tales, which is actually the summer reading theme for children and teens this year. With adults, we've decided to go in a little bit of a different direction, and we actually are doing Trails and Tales for summer reading. So if you are interested in participating in that, it starts June 12th. You can do it either 
on paper, which you can come and pick up at the library or get on our website at eastonpl.org, or through our Beanstack. Um, you can get both the Summer Reading Challenge and the year-long challenge, the 2021 EAPL Reading Challenge, there. So if you're not already following along with the year-long challenge, join us. You can be reading any month at any time. You don't have to be following along in, in the order that we're, you know, doing them in. That's just for funsies. Um, but also take a look at summer reading and join us for that as well. Until next time, happy reading.